Well, that was interesting. The camera's decided it needs to count down from 10 seconds before it uh, turns the video on. I wonder how I did that. Well, this is uh, a little over a week ago. Um, what you see flat here, uh, this was uh, under the dirt pile. Uh, Way my pointer. There he is. To the left of the screen here is the uh, the water around the septic tank. It'll be in other pictures. Anyway, we have uh, Boyette. Uh, he's hauling dirt for Al. And Bia, she's hauling the dirt for Benji. And this is the new guy. He's digging his own dirt in his own bucket. If Tissoy was there, he'd be holding the bucket. Uh, but we have uh, five on that. Because uh, Nanny doesn't work. Uh, we, he's assigned to work three days a week. He's supposed to be doing the farm. The vegetable farm. Okay, this is a look at uh, one of the in-suite bathrooms from the end. Uh, you can't quite make it out here, but this is the door frame. It's an open door. This is a form just laid there because it's, everything has to be someplace. That's, it's just ended up there. And we have a uh, scaffold buck up here with a scaffold plank on it. Uh, that's one of those uh, made out of uh, channel, like, like a bent channel iron and uh, expanding metal. And the important thing, there's two things about this picture. One, from the ceiling to the top of this is like 17 inches. That lets us put uh, heroic glass blocks or two rows of glass blocks, our choice, uh, whichever way we think we can get the, the most moisture out of the bathroom, because there's an exhaust fan on this uh, wall over here, it's on, it's on the other end of this wall. And this bathroom is five and a half feet by about 11. Uh, maybe it's 10. Inside dimension is probably 10, and inside dimension is five and a half, which would make it six and a half or a little more on the outside. Anyway, these three blocks are just stacked up there with a piece of uh, phenolic board between them. That simulates some order joints, or at least two of them. Uh, and there'll be one, two, three, four mortar joints. So we've got three pieces of phenolic board, three quarters. Uh, that's nine quarters. That's two and a quarter inches. Uh, and the mortar joints are uh, four joints a half inch. And that's two inches. So being for everything almost square. It's probably funny good. Anyway, this is three blocks high, two blocks wide. It'll be three inch uh, thick concrete blocks, leaving a five inch uh, space behind them. And when we put the tiles on here, we leave a space between the tile. And the guy across the uh, road from us makes those jealousy windows with the pivoting panels. And he'll cut them to length and just slide them in there. And we can put shelves anywhere we want along that height. So it'll be uh, one of like three openings that has uh, glass in it. And the top is open, uh, which gets some room light into it. And then there'll be uh, LED uh, colored light strips around behind a piece of bent stainless. There's a video on that. Don't need to explain it. Okay. In here, we can see... Uh, uh, a door jam here. The bathroom we were just looking at with the, with the scaffold buck in front of it. This is the mirror image bathroom, uh, which is in bathroom number three. You can see the vent window up here in the back wall. No, you can't, because I've got the king pointed the wrong way. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I was looking the wrong way in the camera, maybe. Vent window. That's a 14-inch... Uh, Sort of an industrial looking fan, uh, but it doesn't turn real fast. It doesn't it's not one of them buzzy things? They got them at Wilcon, eight hundred pesos. That's where what where we're getting them. We have about twelve of them in the build. All be all the same. They come painted red, but you know you can paint them any color you want. I might just leave it red. The theme for this floor is blue, so red really doesn't go with that. Uh, you can see here the rebars. We have a rebar that's. Uh, um, it's two and a half or two and three quarters of an inch nominal 
above the uh, the first pour, and then one three inches away. Then they go to nine and three quarter inch spacing, and to the top where they also have uh, doubled up rebars. And you see the rebars bend around the corner. They're not run to it and away from it. There's one continuous bar around the, the corner to here. And if we didn't have this uh, placeholder for the uh, concrete blocks for the for the um, like, so it's a niche in the shower, or a, you can think of it as a window, but it's really a niche. N i c h e maybe. I'm not a speller. I draw just drawings. I don't do spelling. Anyway, this is one block, and one of the side pieces. I'm sure they just have that thought in there so they remember that it goes there. And over here you see the same thing. They got got some stuff. And the third window is over here. And uh, and uh, you really can't see it because it's shaded out on the light. Uh, maybe. Right in here. That's the third placeholder. Um, the door jam. That's this... Uh, um, thing you see here that's the part of the door form it's got a rectangular bottom piece and a round top piece and uh, uh, we got 26 doors so we've used the same form quite a few times this is uh, uh, also one two huh. one two. bathroom three Bathroom four, bedroom three, bathroom four. There's one in the laundry room. Uh, you can just barely see here the, the the shape of the door jam in that form. Um, and uh, and the same rebars at the bottom, same spacing on on everything. Uh, shrimp tanks, house, they all got the same exact. Uh, rebar. I figured it out one time and I just never bothered to figure out a, a different setup for each thing. But see, we use what we call notched boards. So you take two saw cuts and knock out the little piece between them and uh, the bars fit into notches. It makes it so easy to set them all up. We use it on the floor. We use the same thing on uh, the, well, on this wall we would use it in place. On the house walls, we we made all the rebars up for the uh, for the uh, for the panels, like if it's a 24-foot panel, we made the 24-foot long rebar with all the bars spaced and notched boards both directions. And uh, she, uh, my wife, and uh, at least three guys, I think she might have had four on that crew, maybe be a two, uh, they did all the rebar for the, for the main floor of the house in a little over two days. That's cutting them and tying them and stacking them. And she had to stack them in the reverse, which means you had to make them also. In the reverse order, they was going to be used because the one on the bottom is the last one, and the one that ends up on the top is the first one you need. Otherwise, you'd be restacking them, and they'd be all over the place, and we wouldn't know which one was which anymore. So you take the thing off the top, and that, that fits the next place you're doing. And that actually worked. Oh, here's a cutie. Got two blocks on the floor. Got a piece of funneling board on the top and a hammer. Hammer has nothing to do with it. And you and there's a couple pieces on the end also. Those are put in there uh, because it's almost impossible to pour concrete and make it go clear underneath of a horizontal place. Like horizontal window openings. Uh, we went with round windows because we didn't want to deal with that. Uh, that, that flat on the bottom always had to be filled in with a trowel and, and slopping in either usually mortar rather than concrete. So what they're going to do when they, uh, well, a reason why it's raised up. There's a reason why this is not just sitting on the floor. Uh, we have to have around five inches to run a, uh, uh, the drain lines, uh, for the toilet and the gray water and all that over here to where the plumbing is. And, uh, we have to have a slope of a quarter inch to the foot for drainage. So that ends up that you need at least uh, five, maybe uh, five and a half inches. Um, and that'll leave uh, uh, two and a half inches from the from the top of this future piece of concrete down to the, uh, the, the shower at the edges. 
Uh, you required two inches. We got an extra half inch because you violate code and you're a foreigner. Look out. So we're going to guarantee we, we make code with a little bit of spare on everything we do. Um, anyway, that gives us our step down. Now, this is uh, seven and three quarters high. Uh, we don't want but a seven and a half inch step usually because that matches up to all the other how the steps on the property. If you can climb one, you can climb them all. If you can't climb one, don't bother going anywhere else. Um, we're not going to put two inches of dry pack down and then uh, watered down tile adhesive and try to slap dry, un undampened tiles to it. Not having that. I'm not going to spend the, the, my last few days taking up and putting down tile day after day after day because it's not stuck. We're going to use a self-leveling compound with the spike shoes and mix it up in the drum. We're going to mix it in the mixer. we got a big enough floor. We, we can mix it in the concrete mixer. Why would you not? You throw all your water in. It's a measured amount of water. Throw half of your uh, dry mix in, which has the polymers and the Portland cement and all that crap, and the, and the stuff that makes it uh, fluid. You throw it in there. You stir it. And when, when that's completely smooth, you throw the rest of the powder in there, the rest of the polymer, and you mix the rest of it. It's so easy. And you dump it out. We'll still dump it in buckets and carry it and pitch it in rooms, but we're going to use a laser level in that. And when it's completely flat, then we're going to get a notch trial, make the tile adhesive of the exact amount of water it's supposed to have. And we're going to stick the tiles down. And they'll go down uh, really fast. It's a matter of notch trial, stick a tile. Notch trial, stick a tile. Uh, you, you, you drop them where you want them. You slide them sideways. Half of a tri trial notch, and while you're while you're pressing down on them, and that collapses the uh, the spaces in the notches. And when you slide them back, it's got no air under it anywhere. It's hundred percent contact, pretty much. Anyway, this will this will come out after they uh, after they've poured uh, the rest of the wall. There's two. There's three pours: a four foot, three and a half foot, and a fourteen inch. Um, and then we'll put a piece of uh, uh, finoli board on either side of the door jam and just pour this up level to that height. Um, but the reason it's raised up is so we have a full height door to walk through and the doors interchange with the other doors in the house. These do not have to interchange because these are going to be barn doors. They slide sideways. You know, it's going to uh, slide here to close and over there when it's open. Uh, and we uh, don't anticipate anybody ever rolling one of them things back and forth unless they want to see how it works. Because we're going to put a shower curtain inside of this uh, door opening. The, t the, the, the toilet's over here facing that way, in, around the corner, sort of. <clears throat> the sink is across it. And uh, this whole end on the right over here, going that way, uh, that's the shower. So if if you if you're wanting to uh, uh, take a shower, and don't want to throw water out in the floor. I don't know how we'd get. It's a fairly good sized shower. It's five and a half feet square, you know. But anyway, if you thought you were gonna get water on the floor, you could close the shower curtain. If you want uh, privacy, close the shower curtain. If you want real privacy, slide that door closed and throw the latch. <laughs> and we'll find some way to knock out some glass block and get you out of there if you can't open the door. Take your clothes in with you. Uh, we're, uh, he's uh, uh, lowering the, the vegetation to where we can see what shape the ground is. We got, we're trying to place solar panels, and we have no idea what the property looks like because we haven't been there in a while. Okay, uh, what they did was uh, this thing goes down uh, um, nine feet. No, it goes down 11, 11 feet, 6 inches. Um, plus, this foot that was added on the top, there's a, there's a seam right here that you can't, uh, can't see it on either side. I don't know why you should be able to see it, but you can't. They, there's no rendering on this. That's just the way it comes out when they pour it. Anyway, this was a, 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 a ditch out the, somewhere out here near the bottom of the screen. And uh, they filled all that in with dirt on, on three sides. 
And this is uh, the last of the water from y Yolanda. Um, right here, it's about two feet deep or better. Because the pipes come underneath this uh, shrimp pond one. Uh, they're just underwater right here someplace. Those have to be connected to the septic tank. But uh, uh, we're going to connect those two pipes when we get back. And so they were flushing the water, you know, with the dirt. And it was pushing out down here on the, on the right hand side off screen past this, this end of the septic tank. So there will be a, a mosquito generating water there for how oh, at least a year till we get back. Um, the previous video we were showing what the what the concrete is is poured around the property and where it is in relation to the house. This is the dirty kitchen. It's the only thing with a rectangular window. Um, I think it's 24 feet by 16 or something like that. It's got two counters in it, one on either side under all the windows, identical to the one in the main kitchen. It's just got twice as much of it. Uh, it's only got one refrigerator out there, and uh, I'm not planning on putting a dishwasher there. Or we won't put the dishwasher in our house, we'll put it out there. I don't care which, but we're not buying two dishwashers. We're going to use one. Okay, this is later on in the week. Uh, and you'll see this pile is sort of getting about the same shape on both sides now. That's Al with a bucket of dirt. That's the new guy. I can't never remember his name. I've never met him. Uh, he's been working for us for six months. I should know his name. Okay, there. this is a... Uh, the number one shrimp tank is up here to that side. Uh, this is the water that we can't take it all out because we have to put connect the pipes up. I just assume that they uh, they fill with that dirt and paint or dig it out again later. I might talk to my wife see if I get her. She's in charge of this. They're just showing us the height that is, and we're telling them we want the dirt to go up to the level of the concrete, and then slope away. Um. We want to obvious till when you, that you notice you're walking up on it. Uh, if somebody falls in there, um, there's plenty of things to climb on. There's partitions and stuff that they can get back out. But you wouldn't want them to hit their head or something falling in. I really don't want people falling in. But we need something for people to do. We're having them carry dirt. And this is the, where the water is coming out going down a ditch. So they'll they'll put some more dirt in here until they get up to those orange pipes. So you'll end up having about a foot deep ditch of water here. Uh, I don't know why that water's that deep in there. We haven't got anything connected to it. That's that's eight feet of water. Four, seven and a half feet of water. It's a lot of a lot of water collection when you're not really trying to collect any. At this point, the uh, the water was almost the same height. <laughs> I think it is the same height right there. It tells me we go, oh, and you'll see the dirt pile which was over here at the beginning of the week has gone back to there, so they're working on it. And I don't know whose that thing is. It's just mowing grass. Uh, this place was pretty dry until uh, Yolanda came through and uh, made a mess. This picture is to show us that they had got the uh, half round form taken out of the uh, bathroom uh, three in bedroom two. <laughs> uh, these bolts hold, there's a segment line right here. Uh, one there, one there. They're short pieces. Uh, they're round, and they got uh, seven, seven layers of stuff from the front to the back. And that's how you get all those contours. Um, I th this is real blurry in, in my image on the screen, but I think the camera's actually cleaning it up. Thank you. 
um, this bulkhead in here, when you when you put the bolts in loose, you tap all the pieces till they hit the bulkhead, and that sort of uh, lines them all up. And we put uh, a layer of uh, duct tape around the outside just to make it easier to clean. You can peel the tape right off. In fact, we leave the tape on there if uh, if it's not uh, too distressed. Just save buying tape. And here's B is starting to trip. This is uh, shrimp tank one. And you notice there's a height difference between it and the septic tank. And if you left that floor there with, with no uh, water, the rains they get in the Philippines will come down there and wash up under your slab and take some of your dirt away, which is the foundation for this wall. So we're going to have them uh, uh, fill up every place that's, that's got a concrete floor. We don't want it underwashed. So they'll they'll fill that up, uh, oh, probably another uh, twice as much dirt as they get in there. And this is the dirty kitchen. Uh Baja Kubo over here. Uh, that's got to be Benji. You can tell from the colors. Hmm. You can tell from the hat if you can see his head. I think the same person took this picture uh, about eight or ten seconds later. But uh, you can see that the the size of the uh, shrimp tank, the size of the dirty kitchen, and that's the size of the house. Uh, the round windows are because uh, uh, I couldn't find stock windows. Every time I ask about a catalog, they say, you you make the opening and we'll make the windows to fit. And pretty soon after asking them six or eight times, these friendly, per, you know, smiling people were yelling at me in Filipino. So uh, I went home and told my wife. Uh, she says, what size are the windows going to be? I says, whatever you make them. Uh, we'll make the holes and then make the windows to fit. She says, well, that would make them custom. I said, apparently they're all custom. They don't have stock sizes. They now have stock sizes in City Hardware, but they didn't, they didn't have when we started. So she says, the house is sort of round. It's got some round floors on it. Why don't you make the windows round? It says, your house, how do you want it? She says, round windows. I says, okay. So we went round windows, round exhaust fans, a smaller version of round windows, and the square top door just looked plain stupid on, on a house with round windows. So we put round tops in the doors. In any event, this is an, another overview of uh, uh, where things are and how close they are to the house. And this septic tank here is definitely not over at that property line. It's right up uh, under the end of the uh, shrimp tank. So that means the solar panels are going to be out here which means they're going to be tangled up in this dirt pile. This is a dirt pile from the uh, cistern. It's got to go someplace, too. Uh, this, uh, on some water. Uh, showing them in progress on the dirt. Uh, we're carrying the bucket over and going to toss it out over here. All these uh, rebars go down and are bent and go up under the floor. So every bar in the floor bends right up to the up the wall. That keeps the two pieces of concrete from floating up and down and, and uh, leaking too much. And we'll paint that seam with uh, elastomeric paint. One, one sloppy coat on the seam, let it suck it up in there. And then one coat on the entire tank. So there'd be two on the seams and one on everything else. And if it doesn't look like the coverage is uh, complete, we'll just put another coat. Uh, paint's a little pricey, but the labor's not too bad. Uh, bathroom. Uh, whatever. It's in bedroom one. Bedroom three. <laughs> looking through the door here. That's the uh, where we're looking at the niche uh, being made in the wall. And there was uh, this scaffold buck was put together at the time, had things across the top, and there was a form leaning against the wall. Well, that's the first one we started out looking at. This is what the slip forms look like, uh, stuck in there for the next uh, pour. Uh, and we'll have to tell them that there's supposed to be a piece of conduit sticking up over here. Somebody's left that out. Have to put a piece of conduit up uh, for the lights. It's going to be in the roof here. And uh, 
another piece over here for a uh, um, switch for 12 volt. And they'll have put the round top in here, hopefully. Uh, so when they pour, this will have a door opening. But the slip forms, um, they're the cheapest way that you can build something. They just... And, and look at the finish you get on the concrete if you just rot it a little bit. This isn't rendered. That's just the way it comes out of the form. Look at that nice sharp corner on things. And smoothness. Same thing over here. That's that's concrete. That's the shape of it. So, uh, and these walls, you know. Why would you build a house any other way? This is similar to the picture we saw before. This is the... Uh, uh, bedroom two's uh, ensuite bathroom. Okay, this is bedroom two. What you see here, it's kind of hard to convince these people they have to put the plastic pipe uh, and the through bolt in every hole in the forms. If they leave some out, <clears throat> you get this uh, <clears throat> seepage. When they poured this, this stuff that she see little patches stuck to the wall, that come out uh, as like a, as a watery mess out of the bottom of the uh, uh, slip form and stuck to the wall. Now it's not really stuck because the concrete was dry, and it all sucked the water out of this as it got there. And we have a, a three quarter inch chisel that goes on the uh, hammer drill, and it's just. Drrr, drrr, drrr. And that's clean. About that long. This here, somebody just didn't rot it out. I think we had five people working that day to run one mixer and pour, what is it, 18 bags, something like that, that this wall takes. It's this wall and the end wall. It's all one piece. And this is uh, probably some of the duct tape that was wrapped around the, uh, the form. Uh, it stuck to the concrete more than it stuck to the form. And uh, this uh, this is sort of a specially cut piece of plywood that makes this notch. Um, this is that this is a niche for the next to the toilet where you sit on the phone, and this is a niche where uh, things you don't want to get uh, wet in the shower. Uh. This is uh, bedroom uh, three, and they've uh, taken this uh, stuff out from underneath of here. Probably to get, see, you have to get in through this hole to hold the bolts for these forms. Uh, when you do the first level of a slip form, you can climb over the wall. When you do the second one, and you put this up there, this panel just comes off. It's, 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 uh, Screwed into the face of this form right here in that notch. Got uh, uh, Torx head screws, two inch Torx head screws, T T twenty heads. Um, I asked for some pictures from a little farther away that included several items, so I can try to place where these things are. Um, this is the 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 gutter that comes down. And right under that bucket there someplace is a, a maybe right in here. That's the corner of the cistern behind this pile of dirt. Um, they may actually, looks like they're filling that. This is our roll around wheelbarrow. It's a Dempsey dumpster kind of deal. So it looks like they're, they're headed up there to pour dirt in there. They put a lot, a lot of dirt down here. They filled in at water too. Good. That's what I wanted anyway. Yeah, they're filling in between the cistern and the uh, gutter. The gutter's not connected to the cistern. It managed to get 11 feet of water in it all on its own. That's a Dempsey dumpster. Um, hmm. 1,700 pesos. Um, If it was uh, if it was twenty five hundred, be fifty dollars. That's about a forty dollar wheelbarrow, made out of all metal. The tires are uh, 
rolled steel, got rebar for spokes, got a piece of pipe for a hub, thick wall pipe like Schedule 80 probably, and um, of a bolt for an axle. We got two of these. Uh, this place where the axle uh, connects, uh, hauling around uh, 400 pounds in a wheelbarrow rated for 200 pounds or 240 pounds or whatever it was. Yeah, that was kind of hard on the fatigue on there. So while they were getting ready to fix it, we have a full-time welder. I told them this to get another one. So we have two. Um, and you'll notice that this dirt is not like the the rest of the dirt on the property. He's uh, just got up here in the top and rode a shovel down there to the bottom. That's a stick we ask them to mark something, but I don't know what it is. And they're doing some more digging. Hauling. He's hauling about uh, eight or ten buckets more, maybe more than that, of dirt at one time. And you see that the dirt pile that started here, uh, uh, the beginning of the, the pictures, is now over to there. They'll clean that one off pretty soon, what they're working on. This is the traditional Oriental way of uh, <laughs> change of people going back and forth. And see, they got, they're got getting this up to the top here like it's supposed to be. Because we're going to pour a floor out here bigger than this uh, septic tank to make a CR. And the dirt pile is getting smaller yet. Smaller yet. It's, it's, it's not going to be a dirt pile pretty soon. Uh, this is showing us how much they put in around the cistern. Um, this is the over here on the, mm, this is the same shape as the rest of the gutter. It turns out here and turns down. It's got to have an input on it that comes over here. And, uh, these pipes here are lower than the gutter, as you can see. So the water level will be up above these and there'll be a piece of, uh, screen wire like hardware cloth across the front to keep puppies kittens and rats from going into the cistern and floating around until they drown and nobody would know they're in there this is uh showing that they're dumping it along here and along the back i believe that's the end of the pictures That rather imposing dirt pile is going to have to go. That is a big pile of dirt. Mm. Just cut it straight down where we need it to be. And let it be backfill for the uh, um, the solar panel uh, wall, that long wall. The long side will be on that side, and it wouldn't hurt to backfill it. It would it would deflect wind up and over it more than pounding it. This over here on the right. This is a a, a mongrel tree. We nobody knows what it is. It was a stick. But when we were working, it there was something to sit under for some shade. So I told him, don't don't root it up. Leave it alone. It was here for, uh, before we uh, took over this property. Let, let it grow. And uh, it's now a real tree. Still, still nobody knows what it is. Uh, this dirt pile, I think we're going to leave that one for now. Because we need to move this one. Uh, and if I look at the volume I need here, because except for these these holes on the right over here, where the water there's like uh, one, two, three, four, five holes where the water goes into the cistern, uh, we can fill it up right to the top. Because we're going to pour a floor on top of this uh, cistern uh, with the with the rebars bent up into the walls, 
But the walls are going to be shorter. They'll be less than three feet, probably 30 inches on the inside. So the plus the floor will be 36. And what that's going to be is the uh, koi pond. Uh, you'll have a uh, uh, solids filtration and a biofilter. And there'll be a glass top table out here close to closer to one end. But a couple of metal chairs, like solid uh, flat bar made chairs that don't float. We might even have them galvanized. The fish will love that. Anyway, we'd be able to sit out there and have a cold drink in the evening with the glass glasses sitting on a table you can't see from the surface of the water. And the water will be a horizon pool to go right up to the top. It'll be, a, it'll be a casting in ground to uh, um, just exactly the the height of the water. So you can't see the tank. All you can see is the water. And you can't tell it with behind a pile of dirt, but we have a, a view of mountains behind us back here. We don't have an ocean view, but we got a mountain view. <clears throat> in any event, uh, we have to, we're going to have rebars bent up and this, this uh, um, cistern being as poured concrete, it's like having a solid stem wall or a solid continuous beam, you know, uh, 13 feet tall. So that'll hold up a, a koi pond. Uh, we'll probably have to cast a couple of beams crosswise a short direction. Um, I may have to come in here with a uh, diamond saw and cut a, a notch to set the beams. Could pour the beams separate. <clears throat> I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do on that. I know we got to have a top. And if we have a, a top, there's no reason not to uh, uh, have sidewalls just, just because we can. Just for the price of the sidewall. You can have a koi pond. Or or you could pour it deeper and have a swimming pool. Wouldn't be a very big swimming pool. 25 by 30 or something like that. It's not really exactly a big swimming pool. Okay. We run on and on and on. Anyway, that's where we are today. It's what we're doing. Uh, this is called Villa Cecilia. If it makes any difference to anybody. Or sometimes she calls it the deck on house. But... Uh, That's what we're doing. Okay, so uh, y'all say a little prayer for uh, the people who are sick. Remember, there's some people out there who uh, still catch dengue. It's, it can kill you too. Okay, y'all have a nice day. Bye.